SMART is going to develop a new discipline, really, and the discipline is one of integrated infrastructure planning and management. SMART brings together people, academics, from a whole range of disciplines, but they've got a single focus, and that is to develop that discipline. We can expect the work of SMART to be analytically rigorous. We can expect it to be well-directed, focusing on the right issues. And we can expect that SMART, because of the quality of the people who are engaged in SMART and because of the work that it does, will have a highly credible voice. We can expect SMART's work to be genuinely authoritative. I'm especially interested in the research stream that um, is developing a multi-dimensional dashboard uh, for Australia's uh, infrastructure right across um, the various sorts of infrastructure. Um, so that's, that's land, transport, but also water, uh, social infrastructure indeed, communications and so on. And the idea uh, is to develop a, uh, a set of data uh, which will be drawn from public sector agencies and also from private business uh, that will have an, a single electronic portal that can be accessed by infrastructure analysts, researchers, and be able to interrogate that database. Uh, this, is a, this is a first uh, in Australia and very few places in the world indeed where this sort of capability exists. But if we don't have a capability such as this, we're never going to be able to develop a truly integrated approach to infrastructure issues. Australia has a unique retirement income system. One of the consequences of it, or one of the features of our unique retirement income system, is that there is a very large pool of savings, something like $1.3 trillion that belong to superannuation fund members that is available for investment in a whole range of uh, activities, but including investments in infrastructure projects. The question is whether the infrastructure projects are sufficiently attractive, given the way that they are presently being designed, are they sufficiently attractive investments for this enormous pool of savings? And so one of the questions we need to ask ourselves is, what needs to change? in order to make these infrastructure projects more attractive investments for our superannuation funds. And that's something that I look forward very much to seeing uh, what the researchers come up with. When the mining boom first hit, these days we refer to it as mining boom mark one to distinguish it from the mining boom that we're presently going in, mining boom mark two, which really comes over after the global financial crisis. When mining boom mark one uh, hit, uh, the mining companies, particularly the coal mining companies, uh, were facing uh, uh, a very substantially increased demand for, for coal. Uh, iron ore exports were also under uh, a very strong demand. And of course, the very first thing they encountered was bottlenecks in our ports. People tend to forget, but, and it's not that long ago, but people tend to forget that we um, simply did not have the infrastructure in place to support that rapid increase in mining exports. In mining boom mark two, and this looks like it's, it's a boom that's going to go on for, well, at least two decades, and it would be sensible to plan for it going on for at least two decades, the question still needs to be asked. Do we have the infrastructure in place to support this enhanced level of mining throughput? And the answer is not obvious. It's not obvious that we do. It's not obvious that all these years later, we've put in place the infrastructure that's required to support that rapid uh, increase in exports. Um, associated with the mining boom, there are also other infrastructure demands. Mining companies are building their own infrastructure in various parts of the country. Further down the track, one of the questions that we're going to need to ask as a nation is uh, to what extent those infrastructure investments might be accessed by and be of benefit to the Australian community more generally. It's not a question for today, but it will be a question uh, in the years to come. And we should be thinking today, taking into account today, 
that that will be a live question uh, in years to come.